in today's short uh, installment, I'm really going to go over, as the title says, the lie of for your own protection. And this is something that the government loves to tell us all the time. The reason that they give us for wanting to regulate our weapons and wanting to limit what, what kind of weapons we can have, where we can go, when we can go there, how we can go there, is for our own protection. And the thing about that is, it really makes you feel like, when you look at it, are you an adult or are you a child? And if you are an adult, why are you having someone else tell you what you can and cannot do? And the thing that really made me think about this today, because I really didn't plan on making a monologue on this particular topic at this exact time, was I was watching a, uh, another YouTube video a, about a style of magazine for your AR in California. And this particular magazine is a fixed magazine, so once you install it, it stays in the gun until you disassemble the gun and physically remove screws. And it's designed to be loaded from the side and makes your gun 10 rounds. And, you know, yada, yada, yada. But you know, you know that the elite are not having their protection limited to this way. You know that the governor, for instance, is not going to be protected by police who are armed with AR-15s that are limited to 10-round magazines that you can't remove from the rifle. No, they're going to have 30-round magazines that are fully removable with collapsible buttstocks, flash suppressors, and foregrips. All the, you know, the big, bad uh, things. And I would ask you if it's right for the governor to be protected in this way, is it not right for your own family to be protected to the same level? Because in the end of the day, is the governor of California, or any other politician for that matter, just another human being? Or are they some special deity or entity that, allow, that makes them so much more important than everybody else that they warrant the protection that they deny to everyone else? The idea of... Reducing your magazine capacity to protect you from yourself is effectively what we're told. It's this idea that if you have weapons that are too powerful, magically, you're going to want to now start killing everyone is absolutely absurd. And if that were true, then there's nothing that would stop the police from being the exact same way because, again, they are human beings just like everyone else. So either we believe in equality or we believe that there's a certain class of people who are inherently different and superior to everyone else with the inborn right to rule over everyone else, us, the working class, the people who, as far as they're concerned, simply exist to fill their gas tanks for them and work at McDonald's. And if, if that's all that there is, then sure, go ahead and neuter your guns to become compliant with these laws that people are are making, in uh, with the lie of if you if we only give up our thirty round magazines, you know, really our standard capacity magazines, because in, at the end of the day, a thirty round magazine for an AR-15 is a standard magazine for an AR-15. An extended magazine would be a hundred round drum or a fifty round drum, but the standard magazine is thirty rounds. So let's stop using high capacity as as his, as his mantra because that's really not true. So at the end of the day, if if you're going to be willing to give these up, who then is going to protect you? Because it can't be the police. Because the police you cannot hold to the standard of protecting you. And the reason is even even when the officers. Are want to protect you, most of the time they cannot. I know some people you know live in a city and they're two doors down from the police station and you call the police and the police can be there in 10 seconds. That's fine. But to me that's still 10 seconds too long. But if you if you're like many of us who live out in the countryside, you call the police and then you wait. And then you wait some more. And you wait some more. And maybe Maybe the police might show up, probably long after whoever, whatever the reason why you're calling the police is long gone. And a personal example uh, that I can think of that happened to me, I was uh, in, in my pickup truck and I was off-roading in this Pico right away. And for those who are not from, uh, from Pennsylvania, Pico is the, um, is the power provider from the area. 
and I was in one of their right ways, basically where the overhead power lines were gone. They had transformer nearby, and all I really cared about was that there was some brush to run over and some mud. Uh, sure, I'm not really supposed to be there, and that's why you know Pico's policy was you know when I got stuck on in their right away, and I went to so I'm they were inspecting that particular transformer. Uh, I went to the guy asking him if he could pull me out. He's like, well, no, I buy Pico, you know, policy. I can't do that. It has to be a tow company. And but before they can come, you know, Pico requires that you know the police come out so they can you know file a report, you know, just so it's known that you were out here, pretty much, right? And all he cared about was, are you stealing copper? Which I wasn't stealing copper, and that was obvious. I was an idiot with my truck stuck in a creek. But that's beside the point. What the point is is he called the police, and you know, I, I st- stood around waiting, and we waited, and we waited some more, and more than an hour. I think it was it was pushing an hour and a half to two hours. I got fed up waiting because I had work that night. I worked night shift at the time. So I called the state police on myself. And I, you know, I explained to them, like, you know, look, this is who I am. Um, you know, this is where I'm at. This is what we're, you know, what I'm waiting on, on you guys for. And they went, oh, well, well, we weren't quite sure where that was. So uh, we decided not to show up. And I, I'm, I'm standing there with this look on my face like, are you serious? Are you guys really serious right now? Think, think about that. The police decided not to show up because they, the local state police couldn't figure out where this place was on a main road. And I'm supposed to expect that these same people can protect me. And other times, for instance, I, you know, I, I like to go for walks you know, down back roads because I, I live out in the countryside, so we have lots of back roads. They're very uh, scenic to walk down. But let's, let's throw this out there for, for you, for instance. Let's say you have a group of, say... Ten dogs, they, they escape from someone's property. And these dogs come running up on you, and they decide that they're going to go and take you out because, you know, you look like you might be fun to attack. Well, here are your options. Your options are you can try and run, and you're going to lose against a pack of dogs. You can you call your parents or call the police, and by the time they get there, they can pretty much, you know, maybe find a few bones scattered around after the dogs got done using you as a chew toy. Or you could pull a gun and shoot at them. And and at least in the case of dogs, you start shooting at them, most likely they're going to simply run away. But now let's say you have that pack of 10 dogs, and they decide, you know what, we're not running away. We really want this guy dead. So do you want to have a gun that holds 10 rounds, or do you want to have a gun that holds, say, 17 rounds it's in the case of a, of a Glock 17 or 19 and I'm, I'm going with a Glock here because realistically in most cases if you're going for a walk you're probably not carrying a rifle with you uh so you're, you know you're going to be carrying a pistol so let's go with you know do you want to have a neutered pistol or do you want to have a pistol that has enough ammunition in it so that you can start shooting and not have to think about counting shots while while, uh, while you're fighting against these dogs and on a similar note, I know that's a very specific type of, of event that you know that you could find yourself in, but that's you know just an example. Uh, another example that a lot of times I think people don't really think about because people tend to have this idea in their head. Maybe they watch the movies you know too much or or whatnot or something else in media, and they don't realize that parts of your body can become injured just because it works right this second doesn't mean it's always going to work. Uh, an example I recently saw was a, um, a video of a, of a self-protection um, uh, event in South Africa. And in this video, the, uh, the guy suddenly finds himself under attack. Uh, pretty much he's driving along, and the car in front of him stops. Uh, several men get out of the car with guns drawn and immediately open fire on him. So this thing is, does not even start in such a way that you can start trying to even talk your way out of it or even start running really before you know, you're already being shot at. So the guy throws it in reverse, takes off, and then flips his car. All the while, the men are running after his car, going in reverse, shooting at his car. He gets shot three times. His One of his arms gets disabled. He gets shot through the arm. So now, And, and one, one downside he had was he was carrying without a round in the chamber. And, and many, many people have recommend that you carry with a round in the chamber. That's personally how I personally carry my firearms because that way they'll work. But... That beside the point. So if your arm is disabled, reloading a firearm can be exceedingly difficult. The, the, the requirements of reloading the firearm with one hand becomes much longer. And in his case, he was doing this upside down. He was hanging from his seatbelt upside down in this car. 
Now, in this situation, then, do you really want to have fewer rounds in your gun? Is that going to make you safer? No. What's going to make you safer is having more ammunition in the gun. That way, instead of worrying about reloading, a reload that you may not be able to do because you may not be able to get to your ammunition because you are disabled, or do you want to have a gun that you can simply focus on the attacker and fighting your way through the attack? So we've been built, sold this bill of lies that what we that you only need. For instance, like, like Biden said, you only need two shots. You know, from a from a twelve gauge shotgun, just walk out there and blast off a couple shots, and any attacker will run away from you. That newsflash: not everyone's going to do is going to run away from you. And if we went, if, we, if everyone went down to the idea of just, I'll oh, just have two shots in your shotgun. Then the moment you fire off the second shot, everybody in the area knows that you're out of ammunition because everyone's just, just carrying double barreled shotguns around. Well, except for all the criminals who, you know, don't get, you know, don't care. So they're going to be walking around still with their 30 round magazines. So they're coming after you armed more heavily than you. And I, I've heard of some instances where people have said that, well, you know, defending yourself with an AR-15 is, is not fair. It's, it's not fair to the person attacking you. Uh, and this came from, from a, uh, actually, from, I believe it was from a mother whose son ended up either getting shot and injured or shot and killed by a person defending themselves in their own home when her uh, her son tr- tried to attack them with uh, with a few other friends of his. Uh, and I use friends as, as a very uh, generous term here. It's more like, you know, other thugs of his. But, uh, you know, I digress. Again, newsflash. Self-defense is not a sport. It's not a game. It's not fun. It's not a competition. You want every advantage that you can possibly have. And if a machine gun gives you an advantage over the person attacking you, then a machine gun is what you want. Anything that that maximizes your probability of getting out of the situation without being injured yourself and hopefully doing as much damage to the attacker as possible to stop that attacker as quickly as possible, which reduces the damage, uh, the potential for damage to done to you, the better. So, no, an AR-15 is not unsporting because you're not in a sport. To say it's unsporting is to imply that what you're involved in is a sport. It's not football. This is self-defense. This is your life depends on it. And if the person doesn't want to get shot by your AR-15, there's a real easy way to avoid that. Don't attack you. That's my general view. The way I view it is, if someone attacks me and I have to shoot them, and I say they end up dying from me shooting them, for many people, and I would be you know, upset, uh, upset that someone died. I, I'm always upset when anything dies. You know, I mean, I'm the kind of person, I don't even squish flies. Uh, be, because you know, I, I feel something for anything that's living around me. However, the way I kind of view it in this case is that person effectively shot themselves. They chose to attack me. I didn't choose to be attacked. I'm minding my own business. So if I'm attacked, I have every right to defend myself. And no politician has any right to tell me what I can and can't defend myself with. Now, it's, it's right about now that you know, people on the left then tell, start telling you, Oh, well, you know, they, they go nuclear on you right away. They go, well, so you're saying everyone should have nukes. Well, n- no, that, that, that's, you're, you're simply throwing out a straw man. And, and the reason I say that is the, a nuke, the difference between a nuke and a firearm, and, and a nuke and even artillery or a machine gun, any one of those can be used to defend yourself against a specific threat. Nukes were not designed to defend something from a specific threat. Nukes are simply designed for absolute attrition. Their, the idea was to make it suicidal for an entire nation. So, no, I'm not saying everybody needs to have nukes. I am. I would argue that a country's having nukes has saved has saved lives. But I, I I will concede that nukes probably should stay in the forte of a of a nation as a whole rather than on the on the individual level. But. Should you have a machine gun? Yeah. Should you have an RPG? Sure. Uh, you might go, well, what do you need an RPG for? They might attack me with a tank. 
And if you, if you don't believe me on that, all you have to do is look back at one dude who stole an actual tank and proceeds to run a city over, and another dude who turns a bulldozer into a tank and proceeds to run a, a city over. And guess what? Just because you put armor onto a bulldozer doesn't mean I have a uh, you have any more right to level my house than if you didn't have armor on a bulldozer. So yes, an RPG in that case is definitely warranted, and, and I, that's almost why I would say. Get a 50 cal because right now, unfortunately, that's what we're limited to. But at least with that, you have some hope against you know something like that coming at you. And the the purpose of of the Second Amendment was not has nothing to do with hunting. Okay, so so completely scratch all weapons that were made specifically for hunting animals. You can scratch them from the purpose of the Second Amendment. That's not what it's there for. Okay. The Second Amendment is not there to protect you from the thug that breaks into your house. Because when the Second Amendment was written, it was simply understood that if someone broke into your house to rob from you, steal from you, or you know, rape your wife or, or whatever, that you had a right to defend yourself from that. That's obvious. It doesn't even need to be written in. Now, and then some people say, well, well the Second Amendment there... Uh, it's there to guarantee the right of the government to to have a uh, militia, you know, like, like the National Guard. The National Guard is the new militia, so it, it's saying that the National Guard is allowed to have uh, weapons. Really, Re- I'm supposed to believe that, right? When when in history has any government ever ever needed a constitutionally per- a provided protection to have weapons? There is no con- uh, no government ever has had needed to be protected from something else preventing them from having weapons that the whole point of the constitution is it's not guaranteed rights of governments it guarantees the rights of the people and the people are us not the government the government is effectively the enemy in this case that's how the constitutional views it the constitution is not there to give the government more power it's there to limit the power of the government and you're you're gonna be hard pressed to convince me that uh, uh, that, that um, taking our, our weapons away is limiting the government. That empowers the government. And armed people is far more difficult to subjugate than an unarmed population. At the very least, you're you're gonna make them pay to subjugate you. And I don't know about you, but I I, I tend to view the the phrase "live free or die" as an absolute. You're either free or you're a slave. And personally, I would much rather be free than be a slave. But that's exactly what they're slowly encroaching in on us from where, you know, where we, we started off very free near the beginning. And then when you let a bureaucracy just keep going and going and going, they, they slowly start pulling more and more rights away from you until next thing you know, you have next to nothing. I, I think about it for a second. Today in America... The government has so much surveillance over everything that we do that Joseph Stalin would have killed to have the level of surveillance on his people that our government has on our people. Hell, our government even makes people disappear in the middle of the night and can charge people, well, can hold people without charging them simply by accusing them of, of any form of terrorism, but not even giving an explanation for it. Hell, you know, recently our government just started demonstrating within the last few years that, by the way, um, executing people without a trial who are American citizens, that's a thing now. That's what our government does. So wake up, pay attention to this, and start doing something about it. Because if we simply keep sleeping with the wool over our eyes, the next thing we know, we're going to be living in North Korea, and the North Korean people are going to be looking at us going, you know, man, we got a lot of freedom. You know, in, in comparison, North Koreans will have a lot of freedom compared to us if we keep letting this go. Uh, now, I've decided that this is probably the format that I'm going to do. I, I prefer more of the monologue speaking rather than a full-fledged video. So these are, you know, they're being posted on YouTube. They're going to be more of a uh, like a podcast or a radio uh, broadcast uh, style, just a radio broadcast without commercials. Um so that's probably what I'm going to do from from now, from now on. I'll still do some of the videos. I'll still have the uh, the weapons videos. I, I personally own a number of firearms, and that's actually what I'm using for the weapons videos is I'm using my own personal firearms to go over them. 
And uh, until I run out of firearms to go over, I'll, I'll still be posting videos like that. Uh, and I'll st still likely be posting videos on my uh, on my vehicle builds. But f the more common videos are going to be these ones where I'm simply giving a monologue uh, statement of what's going on in my head at, at this time. You know, based on the things I'm seeing around me and what my opinions are. So with that said, have a good day or night depending on uh, where you're when you're listening to this.